shot to do what? All right, better late than never. Jesus Christ. What's up, everybody? <laughs> better late than never. Another episode of the Protect Our Queens podcast. We are off to a super late start tonight. So, do apologize. Thank you guys for tuning in, as always. Uh, we have another special guest on the show tonight, which we'll get into in just a second. Martin, I know I just saw you like 24 hours ago, but you know, man. <laughs> yeah, we were literally just together. We were at the draft. That's why we're late because you decided to take an afternoon train from New York City back to another major city, which I would have strongly advised you against if I had really known what was going on. But but hey, you know, we're here. We both got to be in the energy of the draft yesterday. So that was, you know, that was a lot of fun. But yeah, anyone who's I mean, if you're watching live, it's a late start. But if you're watching this episode and this, uh, you know, this this segment of the show afterwards on YouTube, uh, Facebook, wherever you're watching from much love. So this isn't late for you if you're late watching. But if you're on here live, if you've been waiting for this episode, we're talking to Coach Law here in a little bit. Um, thank you for rocking with us. If you have any questions or comments, comment live um, wherever you're watching from. This is Protect Our Queens. If you don't like women's basketball, this is not the place for you. But but all is well. We're here, man. We made it. We're here now. So we're you know all all is well, man. Take a breath. We're we're here now. <laughs> I was on the verge of a panic attack outside Union Station today. <laughs> <a> panic attack. <laughs> I mean, I got, look, I'm a fan of South Carolina. I got the assistant coach of South Carolina waiting for me. Because I, I mean, yeah, you have a little panic attack. It's okay. Yeah. Uh, we were at the drive last night. It was a great experience. I was actually inside the venue. Um, it was amazing. Building erupted when Andrew Reese got drafted, by the way, which I honestly wasn't expecting. It was very loud. I mean, there were a lot of Andrew Reese fans. We talked to a couple of fans outside the show, outside the, outside the arena. But building, like, became unglued. When Angel got drafted, and then of course it was in Brooklyn. So when Liberty, uh, when Liberty selected Marquisha Davis, and they, you know, got kind of loud. But yeah, man, it was it was nice. It was good vibe. It was good vibes in there. It, it Energy was, was crazy, man. It was crazy to be in Brooklyn. Like really, feel there were people lined up outside just to see who was coming in. Um, you know, males, females, young people, older people. It was it, no, it was it was really cool to see. I think that honestly, the Angel Reese love. Like I knew people love Angel. But honestly, that was probably the biggest surprise for me, just being in that energy yesterday. Because I, I, you were inside, you had a ticket. I was around the corner watching, um, you know, at an establishment, and there were tons of people in there. Every TV had the draft on, and when Angel's name was called, the place went up. I mean, louder than Caitlin. And then, like you said, we talked to people outside the draft, and one woman came in from Baton Rouge, Louisiana, was in town from we. It was like, yo, people are really Angel Reese fans out here. I, I was that was probably the biggest surprise for me of seeing how much how much real love people have for Angel out here. That was that was pretty cool. It just on a personal note, I get inside the venue. It's a nice venue. They send me. I didn't know really where to go. They didn't really. There was like a signed seat. So they send me up on this elevator. I go up to the elevator to get to the balcony. And it happens. This is like where all the media. So I looked up and I tagged you to do this directly behind me is Ryan Howard. Who's up? <laughs> Okay, like literally, like I'm rubbing elbows with Ryan Howard, and then I look to my right, and Derek Hamby's on the other side of me. I'm like, oh, okay, great. There's Derek Hamby. So I'm still trying to figure out where to go. I look across the room, and Ari Chambers and Taylor Rooks are just giggling in the corner having the time. Of life. Like, okay, great. That's nice. I leave. I go back downstairs. As soon as I get off the, uh, the elevator, I'm face to face with Bree Jones and her sister, and then Neka Agumake comes from around the corner. And this whole time, I'm just in like, man, like I, I just and. Height's different, and I texted Martin this. Height's different, obviously, for men and women. But, like, these are WA players in heels, and I'm, like, we're still, like, I'll tell you, like, I might need to, I might need to. <laughs> I asked you, man. I said, hey, man, you got a suit. You might want to show up. Uh, you, you never know, man. Look, we got we, we to gotta take our opportunities, too, man. They, they, the, they the breadwinners out here. All around, it was, it was a really it was a really nice experience. It was really nice setup. I was up on the balcony, so I kind of had a bird's eye view. Um, I did a lot of posting on the page last night. If you didn't get to see anything, I posted basically every first round pick there was. Um, it was just really dope. Um, 
I was up top. There was like the mezzanine level where like the like the media and other invited players were, and then there was a lower level which was right on the floor where the where the players. It was it was a really nice feel. Um, Ellie yeah, the elephant first, there, first there. ever ex, you know WNBA draft type experience. Um, I know you've met players before, but that's probably the in the room where you've been around the most people of that caliber before. So you know, Marcus, you you get a lot of welcome. You know that welcome to the W campaign is going on. It, you're you're part of that. They need to put you in that because you're. You're, you're getting a nice little welcome season these last couple of years to women's basketball. Satu walked smooth past me when I was standing in line. I'm like, yeah, what she had. I saw her walking from outside. She had that brown, uh, that, you know, my brother's the fashion guy. I can't give you this. Specific I can't tell you what it was. I know she looked great in it. Yeah. That, she looked great. She walked. I just, there was so many. I texted, I texted my friends like, there's a lot of, there's just, there's a lot of beautiful black women in here, man. And I, it was just great. It was beautiful. so a great beautiful experience. Thing to see. Um, Let's get into the show, man. Let us. I'll, I'll give you the honor of introducing our our esteemed guest on the other side of the Protect Our Queens intro. We're gonna get right into the good stuff. Yeah, for anyone. Protect who, our queens. No. Wow. Sorry, my bad. <laughs> yeah. Uh, for anyone who is still rocking with us, who's watching watching live with us, we appreciate you. Um, if you want to see those lovely posts that Marcus just referenced, you can follow us on Instagram at Protect Our Queens underscore you can see all the action um we'll be posting our interviews from outside the draft uh later this week on the page so check out protect our queens on instagram we have one of the top recruiters in the country we are about to bring on the show one of the top coaches to to really ever do it in this thing in in over 20 years of coaching since her first coaching job that she accepted from Ball State in 1994. This woman's been to over 20 NCAA appearances. She just won her second national championship as the assistant coach of South Carolina. She was a three-time high school All-American. She's in the Iowa Athletics Hall of Fame, one of the first women to ever be a Harlem Globetrotter. Talking about my friend, one of the best to ever do it. We're so excited to have on the other side of this intro, we will be joined by South Carolina women's basketball assistant coach, my girl, Joe, 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 let law. Let's get it. Let's do it, bro. I'm ready. Protect our queens. <laughs> no matter what it takes, we must protect our queen. I Me, mean, I just love playing the game. It's fun. I'm reacting on what the defender does. I hit him with a hezzy. After that, they, they quit. Yeah, I think I've always just been able to get downhill. So I've sort of prided myself on that. I know what I'm doing. Like, people can't tell me I'm not doing the right, like, I, I've been taught the right way. Hey, 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 look, coach, I, I gotta, I, I'm trying to keep myself composed. I know I gotta, I'm, I'm gonna try to call you coach. But you you should know we go back to JoJo days, man. Hey, <laughs> I like man. Whenever I tell, I was telling Malcolm, telling my brother you were coming on. He's like, Joe, not JoJo, <laughs> JoJo, man. Hey, coach, I just I gotta tell you, I we you know we want to give you your flowers. I, I gotta I gotta take this chance to tell you, you know, Marcus hears me talk a lot about Tasha and Cappy and yeah. my childhood and coming up and being around Rutgers. Marcus, this one right here is one of those ones who showed me that females will dog a dude in the gym any day of the week. Hey, hey, JoJo, when Tasha, when we would pull up, and Marcus, I'm like 10 years old. This is over 20 years ago. I'm like 10, 10 11 years old, going to Sunny Werblin, Livingston Ave, the gym at Rutgers to pick up games. Coach Law is obviously an assistant at Rutgers, so she wasn't there all the time. But the days when JoJo was in the gym... <laughs> it was up. It was up, bro. I'm talking about flashy side to side, bop, 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 like everything, all of it, bro. Like talking trash, all of it, bro. Like so, coach. Like I, I, I had to let you know. Like, um, even even what we're doing here on this show and the kind of things I'm doing. Um, when I reflect back on just people who really showed me like what it was, because I've been on this women's basketball thing, and you're one of the main people early on that really showed me like just what it <laughs> what it looked like at a high level in person so i just i had to let you know that give marcus some some background here you know what i'm saying <laughs> who, who he's talking to here you know what i'm saying <laughs> uh, first and foremost i just want to say i'm super proud of you i always knew that you were going to be great um you were always determined you didn't back down for anything so i am super super proud of you and i'm happy that i could be on your podcast your your podcast 
man, it's a, it's a pleasure. Like I'm telling you, it's I was like, man, let me try to get JoJo on here and, <laughs> and just show love and and chop it up. And and I told you, you know, my mom, my whole family, they're excited to, to hear that we get to connect and. We're just so proud of you. You know, you know how it is, Coach. My mom's from South Carolina, just like you. We right. watch, we watching you on TV every time we see you. Malcolm, like, look at look at JoJo, <laughs> <laughs> right there doing yeah. what she does. You know what I'm saying? Like, just holding it down. Like, but I mean, yo, we we really are so proud of you. It's so good to have you here and to see you. I got things I I really want to talk to you about. We're not gonna keep you long. Okay. That's all right. Glad to have you here, man. For real. Well, thank you for having me. And the Soros family will always be special to me. You guys were, I mean, are my you my family. So you guys brought me in to your home. And I was at the first Baptist church. And you know, we were family. So those things that I learned from your family, um, I carry it every day in my my everyday walk. Oh, that's love. That's love. Yeah, so um Marcus, Marcus is a South Carolina fan. So I am. I am. Okay. I don't have the I don't have the way back history connection, but I man, I gotta tell you, I enjoyed all 38 wins this season. I tell you that much. All 38. All, what is it? 106 going back the last three years? But yeah, hey, I I when Martin told me, and, and Martin, Martin's such a casual, like Martin for the most part gets not for the most part, like Martin gets all our guests on the show, and some sometimes, you know, most of the time you have players on the show. He's like, yeah, "I got this girl from Jersey." And, oh, you know, cool. Martin texts me like, "Oh, that, yeah, yeah. since I was a kid, I knew the, the assistant coach of South Carolina." I'm like, "Why are we just now talking about this? Like, why? Why, why, why is this just now coming up, bro? I mean, I, I've been talking Martin's ear off about South Carolina since the beginning, right. of the time, and I'm just now finding out that Martin has history with the one and only Coach Law." I, it's a privilege for me. I'm super excited just to just to be in your presence. I I um I tell Martin this all the time. I've been a fan of South Carolina since Asia Wilson. Asia Wilson is the the, the player that really got me into basketball, um okay. and, and and women's basketball anyway. So I I have been keeping track of South Carolina ever since then. I've been a fan, and I have thoroughly enjoyed I, I, as I'm sure you guys have. I've thoroughly enjoyed <laughs> watching South Carolina basketball over the last three years. It's been it's been a pleasure as a fan. So all the way from DC, I just want to say. I, I love and appreciate so much what you guys are doing, coaches, players, team alike, just the program in general. I'm just very, I'm I super excited for this. I'm very excited. Very excited. Thank you. Greatly appreciate it. A lot of hard work over here. I believe it. I hey, believe it. and yeah, we can't wait to get into that. Um, again, if you're watching with us live, we got Coach Law here. Um, if you have any comments or questions along the way, feel free to drop them. But like I said, I got I got stuff to get to with my girl, so I, I want to get right into it. <laughs> Hey, so coach, you know, I remember as a kid, people would talk about the Globetrotter stuff with you. <laughs> and I like it made sense because again, I'd watch you play and I'm like, well, yeah, that 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 looks that that looks right. I just I know I didn't get a chance to really see you in your prime, but I I I feel like I saw some of it. Girl. You would I mean, I'm telling you, I remember those working <laughs> days. It was it was up. So, but uh take us back. That was one of the things that Marcus was like, wait, really? Globetrotter? And and we saw one of the things I didn't know was that you weren't in, in an MC Hammer video. I didn't know that till I wow. looked it up, and <laughs> I, I didn't I didn't know it was that deep. So as I'm looking into things, I'm like, man, I knew JoJo was a globe trotter, but I didn't know I didn't know we did MC Hammer. I didn't know it was like that. So take us back to when, like, how that all happened. You know, becoming a globe trotter, and and how did the MC Hammer video work? Into that? <laughs> well, you know, uh, a saying when they said sometimes, you know, when God closes the door, He opens windows. Um, mm. I was training for uh, the, the USA basketball team. And uh, actually it was the Goodwill Games. And it was the first time in my life ever getting cut from anything. Mm. And you never know who's watching. You never know who's, you know, who's there, you know, as, as you, perform, you were performing, I was performing. Um, I thought I should have made the team. I wanted to represent the red, white, and blue. But uh, God said, this is not the red, white, and blue that I want you to represent. Um, the glow, you know, the glow try to, executives were there um at the train at the trials and when i got cut it was probably one of the worst days of my life but it was also a blessing because they asked me to come try out for the globe trotters and i'm like what i just got cut from usa basketball i can't do tricks but they said no we see something in you we've been watching you for the last two weeks while you were performing it's not just about the tricks it's your character is what your, your worth ethic and we want you to come join you know the globe trotters so they sent me a, a ticket, you know, to come to Orlando to try out. And I really was just going for, I said, oh, well, I can just go and meet all the Hall of Globetrotters. 
but it was actually a tryout. And, uh, you know, I worked extremely hard playing. And they said, well, you just got to play against guys. And I said, we're just playing pickup? And they said, yeah, we just want to watch you play against the guys. And, you know, that was back in the Sunday Worldling days. I, I was like, I, I can do that. I don't know about the tricks, but I can do that. And, uh, you know, I went made it through the two weeks, and then they wanted to talk to me about, a, you know, a contract. So um, I just say that, you know, when I got cut, USA Basketball thought I was going to represent you, the you know, you, USA in the red, white, and blue. God said, no, I want you to travel the world. I want you to be a part of, you know, being the only female with a lot of males traveling the world representing, you know, the Harlem Globetrotters. So um, had an opportunity to visit several countries, um, did that for four years, and it was it was a blessing. And um, I always tell people, you never know who's watching, you know, while you're doing, you know, doing your everyday walk. You know, God, if he closes the door, just know he's going to open up a window. And how did how did the MC Hammer window open up? What, what, <laughs> well, what, what, what did that happen? It, that happened when I was at the trials, and then that we had a um, we had a show in LA, and he was there, and um, he was putting on they was uh, they were going to do a video, and he wanted all the, the celebrity men, and he, Deion Sanders at the time it was uh, 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 Millen, who the the guy the the, the, the great shooter. Um, and he was just getting Ronnie Lott, all the football players, and he mm -hmm. had all these men. And he said, "I want, you know, a female because she's too too legit to quit." And when they called me and told me that he want he wanted me on to be in this video, I thought that was a, a joke as well. I'm like, "No, not MC Hammer," but um, that was a blessing also just to be able to be, you know, a female representing, you know, on the too legit to quit video. That's good. That's so cool. That's yeah. Cool. Oh, it's funny. I look back on it now. I was like, wow. Oh, my God. What do you remember about doing it that day? What do you remember about that day when you did it? Uh, it was. It, it took like, well, I went out. They flew me out to L.A. Um, it didn't just take a day. I mean, it was like four or five. It took about a week to, to film. We did a lot of different takes. We had different, um, you know, Hammer's the worker. You know, he had all his, his entourage. They were training. They had the dancers. It was a big production. So uh, we were out in the sun, you know, early mornings, late nights. And uh, it was just cool because I was in awe of all the celebrities that were there. You know, the Deion Sanders and Ronnie Lott. I'm like, oh, my God, these are guys I look up to. But, uh, you know, it was it was it was a cool experience being able to be amongst all all those celebrities. I, if I was in an MC Hammer video, I would. I would definitely scream it to the mountaintops because I'm not good at keeping secrets. Like, did you did you tell friends and family that you were in an MC Hammer video, or did it just kind of happen? And he was like, "Oh yeah." They, I had to keep it a secret, you know. My, my family knew, and then uh, they, you know, had a limo to come pick me up early in the morning in my neighborhood. I'm like, if this stress limo lim limo come in my neighborhood, everybody's gonna know. So it was like four o'clock in the morning. They picked me up, drove me to the airport. And I, it was the biggest secret that I had to keep. And I just had to prompt my, my mom and dad. I was like, do not tell my, my, my cousins. Don't tell my aunts. Don't tell nobody. nobody. Keep it a secret. So uh, when it finally dropped and they found out that I, I was on it, they were they were all excited. But that was the hardest secret I had to I had to keep. Wow. I'm going to keep that secret. I'm going to be honest. I, I don't think I'd be able to keep that secret. I, I, I would have told at least one person. I'd have had to tell at least like I one homie. Like, you know? I, I have one friend that I was like, I can't tell you where I'm going and what I'm doing, but you're never going to believe it. They knew I was going to LA and I was going to be gone for a week or two, but they didn't know what it was. But I was like, man, I can't say anything. They told me not to say anything. So, But when it dropped, everybody was like, oh my God, you didn't say anything. I'm like, I couldn't. <laughs> wow that is so dope it feels like the world has changed so much since then right i mean the 90s like that man things the hairstyles so i was like oh my god my hair was long you know so <laughs> my, my team now oh my god coach long we saw you on the mc hammer video oh my god you were so your shorts were so big and oh my god your hair was so long and I was like, oh God. I, <laughs> so when people, th when they bring it to me, I'm like, oh, I wish they could just put it in the archives. But, you know, it was an honor. It's an honor. Wow. Yeah. Is anyone, yeah. Did anyone on the, like, on the team now from this year, did any one of them find, like, who? Raven who Johnson. Up? I Raven can imagine. Johnson, <laughs> Raven. And then Raven would pass it on to the team. So, 
Yes, yeah, so Ray, you can't keep any day for Raven. That makes sense. That makes sense. That makes sense. Man, that's hey, but cool. coach, like you said, you look good. At, at least you still look the same. You know, it's one thing Listen, if you look totally different. At least you know what I mean. That's what they. Hey, my kids, like you look the same. Your hair is just longer. I was like, I know. I said, I wish I had what I, you know, felt like I did back then. But <laughs> I, I'm, you know, I have to pretend a little bit. <laughs> All right, fake it till you make it. Hey, nah, that's good stuff, coach. Um. You know, speaking of the kids and, you know, your players, you were at the draft yesterday, as were we. And um, we kind of just wanted to get your thoughts on Camilla, you know, going to Chicago and just what you what you think about her at the next level. Uh, you know, I call her K-Mill. K-Mill is my girl. And I'm so super proud of her. Just, you know, the sacrifices that she's she made at a young age to leave home and uh, come over to the States and, 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 you know, fulfill her dream. And just to hear her name call and just to see her walk across that stage, you know, because all, all, she always said everything I'm doing, I'm doing for my family to provide my family with a better quality of life. And she's that person. She's so humble, so sweet. But just to see her last night, you know, get her, you know, get her name called and be able to walk across that stage, you know, it gave it, it gave my heart, you know, it, it just it just warmed my heart. So I think going to Chicago, Chicago has a special woman that's gonna take their program and you know their uh their their team to another level. And um, I I gotta look into getting my Chicago Sky tickets. Facts, facts. Hey, what coach? What can you say about Camilla's game? That of course, like her size was such a, it was just like so overpowering, you know, at the college level. What can you just say about her game and her work ethic, her skill set, and how you see that obviously translating, but also evolving at the next level? I mean, Camille is a worker. I mean, she, whatever we we decide, you know, she's very unselfish. Mm -hmm. And there was a lot of times that she will, she's a great passer. Mm -hmm. She made everybody around her better. Um, I told her she's the best post player, the fastest post player that I've I've coached. I mean, wow. she rim runs, she really? gets up down the oh, gets the up fastest? down the floor. I mean, I she oh, moves like I, moves. I'm she's when a, I see her run up and down, I'm she I'm moves like a guard. In awe. The fastest yeah. post player you've ever coached. But yeah, she can she can move. And I just think that, you know, her passing abilities, uh, ability to score, um, and you know, just she's very, very unselfish. And I just think that, you know. Her work ethic is, is you know, bar none. Um, she works extremely hard. She's, you know, a leader, um, you know, vo very vocal. And I just think Chicago Sky, you know, has someone special. She's six seven, and, you know, a very, very humble, loving young lady. And I, I'm just great. I, I thank God every day that I, was, I had opportunity to coach her. We saw Camilla get her name called at number three overall to Chicago. And then a couple picks later, Chicago <laughs> brings in Angel Reese at number seven. We watched Camilla and Angel twice go at it this season. What is it about that duo to you that, that you think makes it so exciting? Obviously, you've talked a lot about Camilla. You got to see Angel up close and personal twice this season. What is it about that duo you think is going to be especially special to watch at the next level in Chicago? You know, I recruited Angel as well. Angel is a competitor, a fierce competitor. And uh, the rebounding, the defense, I mean, she, she, she refused to lose. And I, I think with, with her mentality and with Camille's, you know, uh, mentality, they're going to be uh, two, the, the, the dynamic duo. I just think the rebounding, they both rebound the ball extremely well. They both thrive on defense. Um, and they're both fierce competitors. So I think Chicago, of all the teams, they hit the lottery when they 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 got uh, Camilla and uh, Angel Reese, and I'm looking forward to seeing, you know, what you know the both of them can do for that 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 city and for for that team. We talked about Raven a bit earlier. We know that Raven Johnson this is a, a a very important year for her. Obviously, she she mentioned how getting waved off by Caitlin in the Final Four last year, how that was tough for her to come all the way back from that, complete the revenge tour, as she said. Now it's the repeat tour. Can you just kind of walk us through? the processes that Raven Johnson went through in the off season throughout the course of this season, obviously to get to this point now where she's national champion with, with you guys down there in South Carolina. Raven, um, you know, that, that just add a lot of fuel to her. I mean, she, she was always a worker, but I mean, every waking hour she was in the gym, you know, you know, working on her shot, working on her game, you know, and I, you know, that, that game, you know, sort of, you know, it hurt her a little bit. 
but it made her, it motivated her to come back even better and even stronger. And I was just so, so proud to see, you know, okay, you, 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 your offensive game is there, but the dog that you are on defense, I mean, she wanted to guard Caitlin. She was like, I got her. I got her. She will not do what she did to us, you know, last year. And if I happen to have a wide open shot, I'm confident in my in, in my abilities to be able to knock down shots. And I used to always tell her, I said, you're the best PG in the country. As you, when we go, we go as you go. And um, I just saw it in her eyes, you know, and that, you know, she's like, we're not losing. So it just, it motivated her and, uh, you know, just gave her a little bit of fuel. Just go ahead and just, you know, be the best Raven she can be. And I'm just so proud of her season this year. You know, coach, um, undefeated season you talk about raven um i, I want to talk a little bit about Malaysia, but this kind of all goes into it I, i'm I, I i have to ask you i mean i mean coach you know we all love winning and and we love winning as players we love winning is a great incentive of course mm-hmm. but coach what what are you what what are you telling a girl like Malaysia for wiley what are you telling a girl like camilla cardoso what are you telling a girl like raven johnson Girls who, you know, were top players in the country in high school. Malaysia for Wiley, that girl puts the ball around her back in transition like like she was born to do it. Like, what do you yeah. tell? What are y'all telling these girls who are so talented about this system and what I call the John system of sacrifice? Because you brought up yeah. the word already. Yeah. How, how is this working? How are you getting these girls to buy in to this system of sacrifice? <laughs> with the goal of just is it just about winning? I mean, what what is it? What what is it hey, that's in this work? I give a lot of credit to my boss, my friend, my mentor, Dawn Staley. I mean, she's our leader, and she's built a culture here at South Carolina. And um, you know, every home that we go in, we lay it out on the line. It's about sacrifice. It's about team. It's about our culture. You know, doing things the right way. Our standards are high. So each kid that we talk about. We talk about the standard, we talk about the culture and doing things the right way. So, you know, every kid that we we bring to South Carolina, they know there's a standard. You know, they know that we're going to do it the right way. We're going to play together. And the one thing I say about this team, when you named all those players, you know, that theme of love, that theme of team. Mm. And um, that's what helped us, you know, helped us this year to go 38 and 0. They were unselfish. They didn't matter who got the credit as long as we, you know, we were going to get the win. And uh, they're all winners. And when they're, you know, we went through some little rocky roads or whatever, but they was like this, if we got, if this is what it takes to win, we all want to do it. So each and every day, we just try to instill in them, you know, our bar, our standards, and uh, just continue to do things the right way. And, uh, you know, this year they loved on each other. They worked for each other. They bought into the things together. And, uh, you know, that's what we talk about, team unity. It was all about team. Uh, real quick, Coach, just tell me, give me some insight on your conversations with Malaysia. My, my, <laughs> my God. Go, go, Coach Law, when I first saw videos of this girl, I'm, I'm like, yo, I, that her, just her ability, just her ability to do certain things. I mean, what was that process like talking to her about, you know, just – figuring out how to use her ability within the context of this, this system and this sacrifice. Uh, Malaysia is a generational talent. She's gifted. Um, and she, she's a winner and she's very, very unselfish. You know, mm-hmm. and a lot of people can look at her and it's like, Oh, she should be scoring 30, 20. She's like, coach, I just want to win. I just want to win. And uh, every time I would watch her, we were recruiting her. So she was about like sixth, sixth grade, but uh, I would go watch her play against girls, but I got more, excited watching her just playing pickup or playing against the guys in open gym. Wow. Um, and, you know, she just wants to win. She wants to get better. Cause so how can I get better? How can I get better defensively? How can I be, get better offensively? Um, and, you know, just having a kid that have all this, this talent, have all this recognition, all she wanted to do is get better, do it for the state of South Carolina, do it for her city, do it for the university of South Carolina and do it for her family. And uh, I'm just grateful to have an opportunity to the culture on a daily basis. Wow. We talk about my laser wanting to get better and, and a conversation that Martin and I had on the show in reference after, after the big win against UNC, obviously in the second round was how my laser played three minutes in the, in the game earlier in the season against UNC because of her defense. And Don said, we wanted to make that point very early on in her career that 
defense is just as important as as offense. And then she comes back and as Martin and I joked on the show, made Deja Kelly look like the freshman in that game, three steals and three blocks. You talk about Malaysia wanting to get better and just like always wanted to get better. Can you kind of walk us through that process? Like what those conversations were like to get Malaysia from only playing three minutes against UNC early in the season to being a huge, a huge, huge factor in the blowout win against UNC in the second round of the tournament this year. It's, you know, it's about growth and she, and you know, it hurt. She cried and she was, you know, like didn't understand like, Oh my God, I didn't play but three, you know, three minutes, but um, I want to get better. I want to, I want to learn. I don't want to go through, you know, sitting on the bench. I want to be able to help the team. And I said, you know, she watched film with, you know, with me, she watched with coach Staley, with coach, you know, sessions, she wanted to get better and she took pride in it. And one thing about her, she don't want to be embarrassed. She don't like being embarrassed. So she was like, whatever I got to do to not live that moment again, I'm willing to do. She started watching film, started getting in the gym and, um, she, she, she started growing, started learning how to play D, how to, you know, you know learn the plays, how to get, you know, she, she wanted to get better. And each and every day, she was willing to sit down, take the, you know, the criticism, take the positive feedback and, and, and learn. And then I can just say from the North Carolina in November to the North Carolina in March, growth and a want to and the ability to just be coachable and the, the learn. And um, the, the key word when I told her, I said, you, you're not a little girl anymore. You grew up. And by the time you met, you, you had an opportunity to meet Deja Kelly again, you were playing like a grown woman. Although you were a freshman, you didn't play like a freshman. But it's just those days in watching film, being in the gym early, leaving late, those things, you know, and she wanted to. She wanted to get better. She didn't want to have that moment of, you know, playing three minutes. She wanted to make a difference, and she did. I want to. I want to just kind of dive a little bit deeper into this guard group because I, I I've talked to Martin about this, so just about how excited I am for this group of guards next season. Well. You've got Raven, obviously. You have Malaysia, obviously. Tessa was amazing in the national championship game. But the one player I feel like we didn't really talk a lot about this season is Tahina Pow Pow. Transfer comes in from Oregon, one of the best three point shooters in the country. I thought, and I said this to Martin, I thought she did a great job of just getting the ball to who needed to have the ball in the right moments. Can you just kind of talk about this, this guard group as a whole between Raven, Malaysia, Tessa, Tahina, like what each of them bring to the table individually and what makes them such a, a cohesive unit in the backcourt? Um, you know, when we were looking at uh, Pow Pow, it was about her maturity. She was a seasoned a season vet. Um, she had played and we needed her leadership. We le needed her, you know, her, she was a senior really. Um, and most of my other players were were, were freshmen, other than Brial. Bri um, but she came in and she just said, "I want to win. I want to do whatever I got to do to help this team get to the next level." You know, I know I can shoot the ball, but I also know how to distribute. I know how to lead, and um, we needed her to be, you know, her, her leadership, that season senior, that senior leadership, and she brought that. Um, she found a way to make everybody around her better. She took big shots. She led us, you know, she's the best three point shooter on the team, but she also was that coach in the locker room, mm -hmm. if you will. And, um, we wouldn't, have, we wouldn't have gone 38 to no without, you know, her, her leadership and, um, you know, her, her ability to make everybody around her better. But then we look at Bree Hall, you know, Bree has been here, been in our program. Um, uh, we call her big shot breezy, you know, um, you know, Breezy came in and did what she needed to do. Um, she she was like, whatever I have to do to win, I, I know you guys are looking for me to be a defensive stopper, but also whenever my, my name is called, I'm going to step it up. And, um, again, all of our kids, on our, all the guards, they all were locked in and they all brought, you know, brought, you know, different experiences, different qualities to the to the table. And then when I think about Raven, Raven was like, hey, I can be, play the point. I can play the off guard. Whatever you need me to do. Defensively, I want to guard the, the toughest uh, guard that's out there. I want to guard the toughest one. But if I need to push tempo and push pace, I'll do that. And so Raven, you know, we had Raven. And I just told Raven and Powell, I need you guys to help me with Malaysia Fuwali. Fuwali, you know, generational talent, but she was young, a freshman. Also with Tessa Johnson, they were both young. But I think with Breezy and Powell, Powell and Raven, they took those two under their – under their arms and under under their tutelage and taught them how how to do things the right way, how to win. 
So I just think, you know, Coach Winston and I, we worked with the guards. Our guards had a very tight cohesive unit, and they didn't we, they didn't care who played, how many minutes they played, as long as we got the, the job done. So I thought we had, you know, a great group and um, fortunate to have them, and they all are coming back. Wow. Yeah. That, I mean, that is so, that's so profound. Like we, you know, we, again, we would talk about the team a lot on the show and just, um, just the dominance, obviously you guys kept winning, but just the roster, the depth, um, the shot making, just the dip, the balance of it. But again, it's like, to me, it was all just always so fascinating. I'm like, man, these girls don't look like they're struggling with touches. Like you said, you may have rough, may have had rough patches during certain games, during certain stretches, but it, you kept figuring out, you kept figuring out when to go to Camilla, you know, go to Camilla more. You kept figuring out who needs the shot, who needs the ball in the right times. And they just kept being ready. It was all the way up to the end. It was just, it was so impressive coach. Um, <laughs> something I want to ask you about is because I know your emphasis is on guards and I know your defensive background and philosophy, mm -hmm. but as I'm sure you've noticed, you know, the game has pivoted so much to offense and three point shooting. Right. So how how is how has that kind of influenced you, um, the program, your philosophy, and even how you work with guards? Because I mean, you you've got you've got a Raven Johnson, you've got a Malaysia for Wiley, you've got a Pow Pow, you've got a Bree Hall. <laughs> I mean, you've got so many different guards to work with, so many different pieces to the formula. How 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 has kind of your philosophy of guard play started to kind of evolve over time, if if it has at all? Oh, it, it, you know, that's, we always talk about, you know, guards rule, especially around in the March. <laughs> I told you, Marcus, February, I told you, it's not just March, me. It's you know, not just love, me. You it's know, we love, we love, we love, we love post play and I love post play, but you know, our goal was every day that we work, we need to be, you know, seasoned in March. And when, you know, if you got a good guard group that can lead and now you, you blessed if you have post a post game as well and we were fortunate with that but uh our guard play you know it was all about you know being healthy i know tessa got hurt early on mr you know about a month um of playing but uh you did you know we just had to make sure everybody was ready we even try to bring uh, uh sanaya fagan she played a little uh three and then we lost sanaya ja who was a three and a four but uh our core group was all about we just got to make sure we're ready. We will not relive what happened to us last year against Iowa, where they sagged off of us and we couldn't we couldn't knock down shots. You know that was our daily goal every day: is just getting in there, getting better, and um, our player development. They really, really took took to heart. I want to I want to throw a wrench into the script super quickly because while we're talking about guards, I I just it just hit me that. We, South Carolina, you guys have a guard coming in for next season, Madison McDaniel, who just so happens to be from my neck of the woods, <laughs> the Marlboro, the Forestville area. I, I'm, I'm, when I when I saw that someone from my neck of the woods was heading down to South Carolina, I, I got super excited, and I, I I knew, and I didn't tell Martin this when we were putting the show together, but I, I knew that when he said you were a guard person, I just had to ask you about Madison and what she brings to the table. What is it about her that caught your eye? And then of course. For any other South Carolina fan who's not familiar with Madison, what what is it that we can expect from Madison when she hits the floor next season? Um, a competitor. I mean, can score. She can shoot the three. She, you know, not 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 afraid of anything. She's a winner. You know, she can put the ball on the floor, get to the hole. She's unselfish. You know, the key word that we look for that are players that are unselfish. It, coming a part of a team. Being, you know, being able to orchestrate, she's a point guard. She can play the two. Um, and uh, her IQ, her IQ, you know, just knowing the game. She loves the game. And uh, I just think she's going to be a key ingredient for us, you know, next year. Just being able to insert her, insert her abilities and her talents into our guard play. So uh, when I think about Maddie, and you just said, we call her Mouse, Maddie Mouse. Mouse in the house. She's gonna she's gonna bring a lot to um the game cop nation. Yo, I saw her in person at the um Nike <laughs> uh basketball summit in New York um sometime last year. She can go. She can, she go. can go. Oh man, I'm excited to see to see you work with her. Um, yeah. you know, speaking of recruiting, coach, uh, we had a couple people ask um 
when it comes to NIL, you know, everyone's talking about the NIL stuff and all that. How has that changed things for you from your perspective? Um, what, or just what have you noticed in terms of recruiting, um, you know, for you guys and just the landscape of recruiting when it comes to NIL and, and obviously the game is we want to talk to you in a little bit about just the landscape of the game changing overall, but with, with, you know, with all, with the, the brand deals and uh, kids can make money now and stuff and things have changed so much. What, what have you noticed um, in just the landscape of recruiting? I mean, I, I, I applaud it. I mean, I think that, you know, NIL is good. Um, it's good for the game. It's good for the, the players, but I think, you know, here in South Carolina, you know, we aren't just going at the, we're going at the players that want to be a part of what we got going on here. I know a lot of, you know, a lot of kids are just, oh, I want to make money. I want to make money. But do you want to be a part of a program that's winning, a program that's doing things the right way? Um, we talk NIL because it's, it's in that space. But um, for the most part, a lot of players just want to come. They want to win. They want to get better. And the ultimate goal is where we were yesterday is, you know, get to the W. So I think our program, we thrive on player development, doing things the right way winning and getting our players prepared to, you know, take it to that next level. Before we, before we get off the recruiting topic, I do want to just ask because Martin and I were marveled about this a couple, I think it was the last week, week before when we heard this story, another one of the recruits for, for South Carolina coming in next year, Joyce Edwards. We, <laughs> we saw that Joyce originally wasn't going to go to South Carolina because of the major that she wanted was environmental engineering. I believe they, they didn't have that major and Dawn, Got on the phone, made some calls, had some meetings, created the major for her, and now Joyce is – can you – so it's kind of like a two-point question. What is it about Dawn that makes her so different and so special and, and, and want players to come play for her and at South Carolina? And also, did you know that Dawn Staley was going to go create a major for Joyce Edwards so Joyce could come play in South Carolina? Like, how did that – how did that all come about? Do you, do you have any – do you know anything about that? I, I just know that coaches, you know, she's a player's coach. Um, she takes pride in being a, a, a dream merchant, just helping young ladies, you know, maximize their potential, um, you know, fill, fulfill their dreams. Um, she's a phenomenal coach, you know, and I just think that uh, with this thing with, with Joyce, you know, Joyce is a student athlete, student first. Um, and when we were recruiting her, her main priority was her, her education. You know, we knew she was a talented young lady, but her, her education mattered. And um, when she expressed, you know, things that she wanted, I mean, we knew what she could do for us, but Coach Dawn asked her, what can we do for you? And the main thing was, I want to, you know, environmental engineering. I want, I want to major in engineering. Now y'all don't have my, my major. So, you know, coach got on the phone and just started, you know, asking questions, calling around and um, trying to figure it out because at the end of the day, She's a basketball player, but at the end of the day, education matters. And if that was something in the forefront of her mind that she wanted, by any means necessary, we're just going to try to figure out how we can make that happen. And, you know, Coach Staley, along with, you know, our Honors College and some other key people here at the university, we made it happen. Um, you know, Coach, what what has it been like to see women's basketball kind of evolve in this way i mean what 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 comes to mind when you think about just how things have changed and how things are changing i mean what 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 has that been like for you oh it's been great i mean i know a lot of people are talking about the you know the attendance um and you know the the caitlin clark effect i mean you know back in the day we i was at iowa we we had fans and we had um you know, 22,000 fans or 16,000 come to our games as well. But I got to give credit where credit is due. You know, she's been everywhere she goes. You know, people have been trying to, you know, come to see her play. And even the Angel Reese, I know you mentioned early on. I mean, the the, the young ladies that we have in our game right now, it, this is elevating. It. And it's, it's, it's a wonderful thing to see that we have 18.7 million viewing a game, a women's game. So, I'm I'm just proud to be a part of the growth and be a part of seeing where it's going. And I just think it's going to continue to get better. As long as we get quality players, quality coaches, quality teams, you know, the women's game is getting better. 
Hey, hey, I got to ask you real quick, Coach Law, going back to the recruits and stuff and the roster building, is is this the is the model going forward for the foreseeable future to <laughs> build these kind of stacked, deep rosters that know from the forward to the center to the guard to the wing? Is it because I'm thinking of once he said Maddie McDaniel, I said, wait, hold on. And then Joyce Edwards, and I'm thinking, I'm like, wait, so Papa coming back, I'm thinking, I'm going down the roster, I'm like, so is this just the is this the model now? You can tell us. Is this is this what we're looking at from that here on out? My job is to make my boss, Don Staley, sit down across her legs and be able to pick, you know, who we need. We want to win championships as a championship. So um, we're just trying to get quality players in here. We're trying to get quality, a quality team, a good product that we can constantly put out there and display. Um, and I keep telling Don, we're not going to be here that much longer. So we might as well go ahead and try to win as many championships as we possibly can. Back it up. <laughs> so we just, I love the way it feels. I love the way it does. I just, so we're just trying to, you know, trying to get players in here that want to win championships and want to, you know, get prepared for the W. I, I want to just ask this question because it just came to mind when you mentioned Caitlin Clark. Obviously, that national championship game starts in in, in South Carolina. We're, we're down 10-0 to start the game. And any other coach in the country <laughs> probably calls a timeout at that point. And 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 you, you guys are bringing the ball back up the floor after the, after I was, you know, 10th point. And Dawn's just – she's just sitting down and just watching it. Happen and then like if you go back and look at other like, that's not the only time that that has happened. What is like like what goes through your mind in those moments when when things are kind of not going your way? And then what is it about this team where not just Coach Don but you, you the entire coaching staff just has the trust in the in the players to be able to just yeah we're down double digits things aren't going away right now but we're not going to call a timeout because they can figure it out. Like what 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 kind of is going through you guys' mind during that process as that's taking place? We just know the preparation that we've put them through on a daily basis. And we watch them. We watch them grow. And um, that we put them in tough situations in practice. And it just, you no, know, there's a common, spi- you know, a common spirit about us when we know that, you know, we know the team that we have. We know that they were going to figure out. We know that we had senior leadership. We had Powell. We had, uh, you know, we had Camilla. You know, we had Raven, people that have been there before. So when we're not rattled, there's a lot of times they tell me I'm on a, I have a poker face when I'm on the, on the sideline. But if I'm calm, they're calm. So if we're all, oh, my God, oh, my God, they're going to be like that. And each and every day we call it preparation. If we prepare them to do a certain things, we put them through tough trials and tough things doing practice on a daily basis. When it comes down to the games, that's that's when they have to go and figure some things out because we prepare them. So Don looked at me. I looked at Don, and I mean, I she just gave me a look. I gave her a look. I said, "Then I'm they're not phased." Now in the beginning of the game, when they're making all these little noises in the locker room, we were like, "What the what?" <laughs> you know, I mean, they were just I mean loose. Like I said, "What well, I And this, I mean, Don looked at me. I said, all right. and "She said, y'all, either we gonna get blown out." <laughs> Oh, they gonna blow. Oh, we gonna blow them out, and <laughs> because they were just super loose. So once that ball went up in the air, and they went, you know, and I would did punches. They went up, <laughs> and I just looked at her, and then I watched Camilla, and I looked at you know a- at Ashlyn, and they were all got in the huddle. Coaches looked at me like they good. So after the three minutes, and we start the defense, and I start hearing the little chatter in the locker, then they mm. start holding each other accountable. Things that we've seen in practice, mm. we were fine. And uh, a lot of people was like, "Oh my God, we didn't know y'all were gonna be like that." But I realized I didn't realize in the fourth quarter, for the last four minutes and thirteen seconds, we held them scoreless. Ooh. But I'm not surprised because I've seen our girls, our team, do this with our practice guys. You know, if they lock in and they're locked in defensively and locked in together, mm. we've seen it. So, you know, um, some of the things that they've done this year, because being honest, in June, if you guys were to say we're going 38-0, and 0, I don't know. But as we kept getting better each and every day, we played a tough schedule. We went to Paris, and they start learning, and they were starting being, you know, want to learn and want to, you know, do more. The more we added to their plate and the more, that you know, 
test that we put them through, they handled it. You know, as each and every game went, went by. Now, the Tennessee game, I'm like, Lord, we going <laughs> to. Hey, that was. <laughs> I start with Camilla. I said, "Oh my God, this is right here. We, we're destined <laughs> to go. It. This is the one. This might be the one." <laughs> I said, "But you know, they didn't. They still didn't look faced. Wow. You know, in the game. But I want. We watched Camilla knock down deep threes and half court shots. All you know in practice. So when coach just told her, "Hey, and they pass it in, shoot it." And when she shot it. I was like, "Oh my God, she does it. We've seen her knock down these threes." In practice, you know, so, you know, we needed a little luck and, and we're grateful for it. But the preparation, I think it's all in the preparation that that we it, it allows us as coaches to be calm. Hey, coach, I knew from the first game of the season when y'all smacked Notre Dame by 30, nobody was beating y'all. I looked at that team. I said, hey, man, I don't know what y'all looking at, what y'all talking about. If, if this is what what's going on, <laughs> ain't nobody beating them. I, 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 Again, we were pra- warming up, and I did not know we were going to do it like that because I was like, oh, my God, it's probably the worst warm-up we've had. You know, we were young, so you had some kids, you know, just missing airballing, shooting uh, jump shots, not hitting the rim, missing layups. I'm like, I don't know if they're going to get stage fright. We're in a you know, different country. I mean, it was packed. Mm-hmm. And Don was like, how did they warm up? I'm like, oh, boy. <laughs> and then they came out blazing. I was like, oh, my God. <laughs> we talked about we talk about preparation. And, and throughout the course of the season, especially down the stretch of the season in the tournament, South Carolina was probably, I wouldn't even go as far to say undeniably, the best third quarter team in the country of just coming out of half and just – Smacking teams. I mean, the third quarter against NC State was huge because that game was tight going into half. The third quarter against Iowa in the national championship game, huge because that game was tight. Like, what is it about? Like, can you just kind of peel the curtain back a bit? Take us into those halftime. Like, what's happening during halftime where, where they're coming out and they're just smacking teams in the third quarter? Like, I'm texting Martin, like, yo. People, yeah, people are always on that broadcast, like, man, if we could just hear what Don said at <laughs> halftime, people are just assuming that it's going down in there. Yeah, and this, I mean, again, you know, we prepare them in practice. And then uh, there are times, you know, coaches just like, hey, um, this is what we did. This, this is what we're not doing. This is the areas we need to address. You know, go out there and get it done. And they will do their little huddle and do what they have to do. And um, third quarter has been our best quarter. But, like, we always – we thrive on – we have the best bench in the country. So we can wear people down first quarter – Second quarter, but oh, when it comes to third and fourth quarter, can they sustain? Because that when we go to our bench, we getting better, we getting better, we going deeper, we going deeper. So, um, just preparing each individual. I'll let we went eleven deep, each indi- individual, just preparing them for that moment. It's not the first quarter, second quarter, but when we ever when we put you in the game and we call your number, you got to be ready and you got to be prepared. So. Um, our, our bench production, that's what we were, we thrived on with our, we're going to get our bench. We got to be, you got to be guys, you guys got to be in better shape than the starters. So we could start one through, you know, 10 through well, one through five. And then we go six, seven, eight, nine. We could start anyone, any one of those people on our bench. We could have started. So um, I just think that third and fourth quarter, that's when our bench, you know, was our, our, our deadly weapon. So. Coach, one thing that me and Martin have in common is we're, we're both preacher's kids. My mom's a reverend. But I tell you this, that bench in the tournament had me acting a little out of character. I mean, <laughs> the, Ashlyn and Chloe and Tessa, they had me acting out of I won't. I can't show you the messages on live YouTube, but I was acting a little out of character with that bench. That bench had me acting out of fun. And I seen Ashley Watkins come out there. She gave me four blocks one game. She gave me 20 bullets in another game. I mean, man, I was coach. I'm. I hand on the back. I was like, I want to act like a Peter's kid. When I was talking about. I tell you right now, that bench had me out of character, man. That's oh, I can't wait for next year, bro. Oh, I can't wait for yeah. next year. Um, yeah, looking ahead to next season, coach. Um, what what are your thoughts about? Um, obviously, you don't replace a Camilla, but what looking ahead, how do you see the team operating um, without Camilla as the centerpiece? I mean, you know, we're going to miss Camilla a lot, you know, her leadership, you know, what she brings offensively and defensively, but collectively, you know, we've got, you know, uh, a core group that's coming back. 
Um, we've added some key pieces with George Edwards, with Maddie, um, Adele Tack, who um, should be, you know, with us. You know, she's on the bench this year, but she's six, 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 seven, six, six. Um, and, you know, um, who who knows about what, what's going on in this portal. But I, I think right now we don't sign anyone else. We have enough, you know, and uh, they're hungry. Um, they're coming back. We don't have anybody leaving. Um, and we're just adding more to what we have. So it's collectively as a unit, we're going to have to be a total unit to replace a player like Camilo Cardoso. So we, we, we feel good about, you know, who we have coming back and uh, our additions. So we just got to buckle down and someone else, each, each person is going to have to do a little bit more to fill that void. Yeah, that, that makes complete sense. Um, and I know it's all about the collective and the unit. I know you guys preach that, but if you, if you could give us one player to watch for next year that you're looking to maybe have a big year or just an impact year. Um, and I, again, I can't even imagine how tough that is with all the girls y'all got over there. I, I can't imagine, but uh, if you could point out one for us, who, 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 who should we have our eye on for next year? You think? Uh, you know, I do. I mean, I know the ones that the knowns, Ashlyn Watkins. I mean, she started coming into her own as a late. And Sonia Fagan. I mean, I really think that Fagan started figuring some things out the last, let's say, the latter part of the season. Um, you know, she was being vocal. She was posting up. I think in that championship game, she she, yeah. she had her hand on, on a lot yeah. of balls. She yeah. saved a lot, rebounding, putbacks. I think she's going to have a breakout season next year and uh, along with you know our freshman Joyce and Maddie they're going to come in and add to but Sonata Fagan and uh, Ashton Watkins I think are going to be you guys are going to be surprised by those two I just I want to I want to ask this and hopefully asking me I won't I don't, I don't want to get you in trouble with Coach Staley but I, I just know from her personality <laughs> there has to be a Coach Staley story oh, that we can get tonight on the show. Just I, I just know that there got to be something that you that you could just give us a good story about Coach Staley down there in South Carolina. Man, I I love Coach Staley. I mean, I love her to death. I mean, she's she's like I said, she's my boss, but she's my friend. She's my mentor, and she's so funny. She's funny. That's the one thing people don't understand. She keeps me laughing all the time. Jokester. And most people look like, oh, she's so serious. And, oh, she's this, she's that. She is. And she's very organized, very uh, disciplinary, but comedian. Keeps me, keep us laughing. It's never a dull moment. Um, the sweetest person you ever want to meet. And I'm just, I'm truly blessed just to be able to have an opportunity to work with her, work, work for her, and, um, you know, just to, you know, have her as a friend and a mentor. So the funny part is that, you know, most people look at me like, she is so serious. She's funny, a comedian. A hey, comedian. when the videos of her doing the chicken head in practice, I already know. Oh, and, 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 and the story, oh, the story people say, she's a, a great dancer. She's gotten better. <laughs> She put, she, put, she put the reps in. She put yeah, the reps in. That's that preparation, uh, Mark. That's the preparation. She's the motivation. She gets them in now. Her step, I told her, I said, Coach, I've been with you for a minute. You get it, girl. You get those steps. You get better. She takes pride in it now. She she she, she takes pride in it. But, uh, you know, a comedian and, and a great dancer. Wow. wow. <laughs> I can't think about when she got up on the – there's a clip that went on on social. She got up on the ladder to cut the net down, and she just started. To... Oh, dance it! Yeah, <laughs> run it in. Dance it. Coach Staley, man, gotta love Coach Staley. Yeah. Um, speaking of stories, as we're wrapping up here with Coach Law, um, Coach, I was when I told you when I shared with my mom you were coming on the show, she was ecstatic. <laughs> We were talking about, you know, the Rutgers days. I wanted to get officially the story from you. She said she remembered a story about when you recruited uh, Tammy Sutton Brown. And something about how when y'all went out to eat, Tammy said something about her favorite song or something like that. And yeah. you went to drumming the song on the table or something like that. What take me? What what was that story? Do you do you remember uh, what, what yeah, happened? Yeah, I, I remember it like it was yesterday. She was just like, "Oh, if you guys really want me, you know, you'll play my favorite song." You know, we had a Chinese restaurant. I'm like, "What?" 
the outcome of the record is if you play this song, you know, you play my favorite song right now. I said, what? Let me get these chopsticks and start tap dancing and playing and beating the drums on the... And these people looking at me in the Chinese restaurant like, what? I said, man, we're trying to get this player. Uh, whatever she wants me to remember do, we, we go get it done. And she was like, oh, you remember? I was like, yeah. I'm like, I mean, I'm trying to do it. Coach String is looking at me like, what are you doing? I said, trying to get this kid. And she said, beat these drums. Give me the chopsticks. I'm going to play the drums. And she ended up coming, but uh, whew, by any means, <laughs> that, what you know, was uh, that, 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 she loved Lion King, and mm. um, you know, that was one of her favorite animated movies. And and I was, her nickname became Sim, so whatever I call her Simba. So it's just a yeah, Akuma Matata, you know. We drumming Akuma Matata on the Chinese. Yeah, I'm trying, I'm trying to beat the drums and do yeah, it. Man. Need me to do to get her to be a scholar. Hey, that's what the, the top recruiter in the country. That's what that's what it takes right there. And and then I read that Yusha had you get her some chitlins. That's how you yeah. got Yusha up there. Yusha had me getting a lot of things. You know, oh my God, it's yeah. She just she's like, I need it. I don't care what you have. I need some chitlins. I was like, chitlins on a visit. <laughs> I'm in there looking at all the restaurants in New Jersey. New Jersey trying to, trying to find some chitlins. Trying to find somebody who sold chitlins. So, yeah. Oh, man. You, you should you know, kill more. That, man, yeah. that, you know, Rutgers women's basketball, that's a big part of my childhood, man. People people who know me know that. Yes. Um, for sure, man. Nah, that, that was a, <laughs> that was a those great time. Those are the times, days. Those are the time. days, for sure. Um, before we get you out of here, Coach, we do want to do um, – Real quick, you know, even as you mentioned playing in Iowa and, um, you know, your time there and having fans, I, I, I want you to, you know, take your time. You probably have a couple names on the tip of your brain, but go ahead and give give love, give flowers to some of the players that you played against in your time. And also, if you wouldn't mind adding in some of the players that you've most enjoyed coaching against in your time as a coach. Wow, players I played against, man. Ah, there's a Tempe Brown that was mm. at Michigan. Uh, you know, I can go back to you know Tanya Edwards that was at Tennessee. Mm. Uh, Penny Toller that was at Long Beach State. Uh, Nikki Larry that was at Ohio State. Um, man, this our the Big Ten back then was mm. was pretty pretty tough. Um, you know, Lisa Klein, uh, Tracy Hall, you know, so it was a lot of good ones that I, I, I played against, but then some of the ones that, um, oh, that were on my team that I respected was like the Michelle Ice Edwards, you know, the Fran Theo Price, the Katie Aves, you know, doing those, those days, those girls, they helped me, push me, um, on the daily, and Steph Shuler, Steph pushed me, but coaches, you said that I coached against. Hmm. Back then or now? I mean, I, I respect Gino Oriama. Um, let me see. Going up uh, and give me how about players that you coached against? Oh, Play, players. players you coached, yeah, players that you've coached against. Um, that kind of left uh that that left that impression on you um ever since you coached against them, or that you uh that you weren't looking forward to coaching against maybe sometimes, or that yeah. you were looking forward to. Let us see some players that I coached against that I played. I coached against. Let me see. Um. Oh, players, players that I coached against. Oh, I mean, um, I didn't like play. You know, going against UCLA with Shannon uh, when we had to play against you know Duke, uh, Tia Jackson. You know, I didn't like that. You know, um, didn't play Rutgers when Natasha was there, so uh, we didn't. I didn't get to to that. Uh, let's see. Um, I'm trying to think. Uh, oh, that's a tough one, Martin. I mean, I have to really think back on some 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 players that I, I coached against. Uh, but those are the ones that ring a bell for right now. Mm. But. Uh, just some other coaches that are out there that I didn't like playing against, you know, just like I said, you know, I didn't like playing against Gino, uh, coach Foster when he was at Ohio state, mm. um, 
uh, let's see. Um, you know, I love playing against Neo Ivy, but I didn't like playing against her because you know, I wanted it to be a win win situation. That's <laughs> almost respect. Oh, Chelsea Newton. Oh, I don't like playing against my baby. You know, <laughs> she'll do it. She's at Texas AM. I was like, oh, I didn't like it. I didn't like it when she was at Georgia, but you know, it's my baby. So I'm like, oh, God, I don't, I don't want to look down the other end and, you know, have to give you this, this poor whooping, but, you know. <laughs> so it's just you know when I think about different ones that I've coached and coached against and 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 actually had to coach and they were they were right beside me but then when they were against I me mean, I was like okay I love you but uh, I gotta go and get this win. <laughs> That's great. So, That's yeah. awesome. Love that. Yeah. Coach, one last thing before we go, one thing that we ask all of our guests on the show to do is name their top five basketball queens. This could be coaches, players, people you look up to just showing love to five people specifically in the in the world of women's basketball. Wow. First and foremost, Vivian Stringer. Um that's my my queen that I played for, I worked for, um, that poured a lot into me. Um it's my hero. So I mean I have the utmost respect for her. Um and you know Neil Ivy I really, you know, look up to her. I'm happy for what she's doing with her program. Um, Joni Taylor, um, she's doing a great job, you know, at, at Texas A&M. Um, let's see. Um, oh, Shannon Perry, who's at UCLA. I mean, I really, you know, like what she's doing um, with that program as well. Uh, 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 uh. Um, let's see. I'm my, my 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 boss. I mean, I, I work with her, but I I'm very grateful and I'm so super proud of her. Um, you know, being the first uh, black coach, you know, male or female to to win three. So um, I got the almost respect for for Dawn Staley as well. So I think that's five, right? Let's see, Vivian, Dawn, Neil, Joni. And uh, yeah, those are, you know, my top five for right now. I got a whole slew of others, but you know, we know they, you do. They, they 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 stick out. We we know you do. Hey, Marcus, <laughs> you know we gotta protect our queen, Coach Law, for coming through on the show. Coach, you know we got big love for you. We really appreciate you coming and and spending some time with us tonight. For real, it's been it's been a pleasure for us. Really appreciate well, you, Coach. You. You guys are doing a great job, and thank you for having me. And uh, I'm going to have to tell everyone, go out and support. Uh, protect the Queens. I like it. I like it. Appreciate you, Coach. Appreciate you. <laughs> thank last, you guys so much. Last thing I'll say before we go, Coach Law, is I will see you at the championship parade next year. Um, <laughs> it's been an amazing episode of Protect Our Queens tonight with the one and only Coach Gillette. Law, thank you guys for all of you guys that tuned in live. Thank you guys for watching. We appreciate you guys for sticking with us to the late start. For all you guys that are watching this back, we appreciate you guys. Don't forget to like, subscribe, comment. Um, follow us on Instagram at protectourqueens underscore. There's a lot of great things happening in the world of women's basketball, and this is the place where you want to be. As Martin said at the top of the show, if you don't like women's basketball, this is not the place <laughs> for you. So, for South Carolina assistant coach, Miss Gillette Law, and my guy, my brother in Christ, fellow PK Martin Sories, this is Marcus of Protect Our Queens signing off. Thank you guys for watching. And as always, you guys go enjoy yourselves some nice women's basketball.